The financial needs of a business go beyond tax and attest services. That's why CTBK goes beyond accounting services and offers outsourced solutions through their affiliation with CFO Solutions Plus. These additional services allow clients to focus on their operational and long-term strategic goals. Trust CTBK's outsourced solutions to provide cost-effective, value-added financial services tailored to your company's needs. Call CTBK at 716-630-2400. Again, 716-630-2400. Or go to ctbk.com to learn more about CTBK's outsourced solutions. Welcome to another edition of Tim Graham and Friends, brought to you by CTBK, CPAs and Business Consultants. I'm Tim Graham from The Athletic, here with my usual co-host, Jonah Bronstein of the New Bronstein Times, and uh, a guest who has been in the works for quite a while. Uh, it's just a matter of timing and uh, making it happen. Uh, you will know the voice if you don't know the face. Uh, he is uh, native Western New Yorker, Steve Trippy. Uh, 10 years on 97 Rock as the morning producer for Norton in the morning and also for Morning Bull. And uh, on occasion, a substitute for the Tim Graham show on 1270 The Fan. Uh, it happened yeah. a couple of times that I can recall, and I enjoyed it. And I used to see Steve in the, um, in the locker rooms for both the Sabres and the Bills, uh, getting sound for the 97 Rock morning shows. And so I've known Steve for quite a while. And um, good, good to have him on. A little bit of a different perspective. He knows his sports, but he's also uh, been in the music biz. Um, and he's now living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Steve, thanks for uh, joining the show. I Thank would you. say, I just want to say Tim was, or Steve was the best radio producer we ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. And I out. I really appreciate that, even if you're lying. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's uh, we can talk sports, we can talk music, we can talk the radio business. Uh -huh. um, but I want to start off with a story that a lot of people probably don't know, and I think it's obviously um, it's a heartbreaking story. Um, it's a it's a bad break for you, but I know that you're willing to talk about it. Uh, uh huh. You left, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you left Cumulus, which is the home of 103.3 The Edge and 97 Rock and a couple other stations, because you were going to go on tour with the band Beach Slang. And Beach Slang is a hip rock band, or it was, and it, uh, it, it, it ran into some turbulence because of problem with the lead singer. And this band was big enough to be written about by Billboard magazine and Rolling Stone and, and everybody, uh, when things went wrong, you had just joined the band as its drummer. And this I'm sure had to feel like a pretty big break. Um, can you get into how that happens? And, uh, and then we can talk about what went wrong. Yeah. So I've been a musician pretty much my entire life. I played the drums in a lot of bands growing up. My first show I played was 14 at a place called the Showplace Theater, which you may or may not know of. It's in uh, Black Rock on uh, Grant Street there near Military Road. Um, and, you know, I had been in vans my whole life, you know, whether it was sleeping on floors and in vans, booking shows on. Back in the day, there was something called MySpace, which was like Facebook and Twitter, but actually in some ways more fun and wholesome than it, the internet is now. So the bands that I was in really had that moment, like the mid 2000s, late 2000s. I was on the road a lot, uh, but it was self book, self book shows. The label I was on had very low budget, uh, never had a booking agent, never had anybody to help you. But the, the four of us sweating each other out in the van all day. So you do that when you're like 18, 19, 20, 21, and you sleep on floors and you don't eat and you do the best you can to survive. And then eventually somewhere along the way, you're like, it's just too hard to live that life without any sort of like financial security. So I left speaker fire in 2009 and went back to college, got my degree. Uh, and I'd always been told I was good at talking. So I, <laughs> I don't know. My story is very weird. This is already like the most self-important 90 seconds I've ever had, but um, in the van, the Sabres, you know, the Buffalo Sabres, they're a hockey team. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're, it's this crazy thing where you play this game on ice and they run around on skates, but like, 
They were once good. I promise anyone listening, they actually were good once. Um, the speaker fire was on the road in like 05, 06, 07 when the Sabres were good. So we, that was the only thing we talked about for a long time was just like, who's playing tonight? What's happening? And we're in Chicago and the Sabres are playing in Winnipeg or whatever it was. Uh, not then, but you know what I mean. And I had a serious XM radio and we listened to the games on my serious radio on the road because back in the day, you know, believe it or not, you didn't have this device that had every instant, every all world knowledge and history immediately at your fingertips then, right? Um, and we would just talk a lot and people were and like the van, like Ian, my, my singer would be like, Steve, man, you, you just talk, dude, you could just talk. Like you seriously could do sports radio. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I would always brush it off. And back in 2008, WGR sports radio 550 had a, uh, the rookie contest, which was like, a the American idol of Buffalo sports radio effectively. And I sent in a tape when I was just really high in my bass player's closet. And I got a phone call from my then boss, Andy Roth, who's like, Hey, who is this? And I'm like, I don't know, bro, you called me. And he's like, yeah, this is Andy Roth. I'm the program director for WGR and your tape got pulled. Do you want to be on the rookie contest? And I was like, okay. And then I got to like the finals of that didn't win, but then I got a job with him about two years later on GR. So I started to work into radio and like went really hard into that. So like the music side kind of took a bit of a, a sidestep. I still played. I was in a band called Sleepy Haha's. We did a few records. I was in, I got a message on the chat here. I was in Curtain the Loaders, which was a 90s rock cover band. We played our first show in 2010, which was like the 90s. That's too new. You know, that was like, it was a weird pastiche then. Uh, and nowadays, like the 90s are back and really in. And now it's like almost played out. Like you got to be in a 2000s band because 2000 was 22 years ago. And that's nostalgic now. Are you guys with me so far? I'm going on a tangent already. Yeah, yeah. And I would say Curtain the Loaders was the first time I heard it years ago was my favorite band name that I ever heard. And it might still be the best it was, band name I ever heard. Thank you. That was mostly a joke. And it just sort of stuck because we always just called it Loaders. And for those that are listening or watching this that are from like a different generation, Kurt Loader was a rock and roll journalist, which is also something that doesn't exist anymore. But back in the 80s, there was this thing called MTV and they had music videos on television. It's a crazy concept where like bands would get play, make content that would be on cable television. And then like you could like get notarized. It was sort of like radio on TV. And nowadays MTV is, is MTV even still a thing? I don't even yeah, know. If it's, it's reality not, shows. It's like know, Rob Dyrdek 24 7. And... Teen pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah okay. Uh, well, back when they had music on music television, there my was festering MTV. blister, all those shows. <laughs> my festering blister, my kids festering blister, the, uh, the sequel. Um, so Kurt Loder was the head of uh, MTV news, which was like rock and like pop culture co coverage of the world. And he famously broke that. I think if, if I'm right about this, he didn't, he break the story that Kurt Cobain died in 94. I think that was his scoop at the time, which was a massively important story in like nineties popular culture. So those that don't know, that was the whole joke was that it was like Kurt and the loaders was just our nineties pop cultural throwback name. Um, How do you played... end up back in the game so forcefully with beach slang to the point where it's now a, a kind of an eruption of your career. You're going to pull up stakes and, and make a go of it after so many years in radio. So I got a call from my buddy, Jay Zubricki, who I, I don't know if I got permission to say his name, but whatever. Jay works at a recording studio. Called I'll PCR. send you all the proper releases. I got to get the release. So Jay has just worked with us with my old bands for forever. I just know that dude since I was like 17 and he, he's a full-time engineer at GCR, which is a, the Robbie Goo, Robbie Takex recording studio in downtown Buffalo. I've been out down there. And I get a mysterious phone call in the fall of 2018. Hey, Steve, um, I'm going to need a drummer like the two dates uh, in a couple of weeks. Can, can you do it? And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, I mean, are they, like, do they have money? They're like, yeah, they'll pay you. I'm like, oh, okay. thought nothing of it. I thought it was like some terrible local band that needed a drummer. Sorry to sound judgmental, but like, I, that's honestly, that's what I thought it was. And like, <laughs> those are usually the people who need somebody in two days. Right. And, and, and I get a phone call a few days later, like, Hey, they're going to do some covers. Do you learn these songs? And I'm like, well, who am I working with Jay? Like what's going on? He's like, well, you're going to be working with the beach line. And I was like, Oh, I thought they have a drummer. And he's like, yeah, but there was, he had a kid getting born or something. I don't know the whole story, but they didn't have a drummer available to do the sessions. It was September of 2018. And I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't tell anybody that was really important. I could mention it to no one who I was working with. I'm like, okay. And I just saw them 
six months ago open up for a band I was a really big fan of called Minus the Bear, who was from Tacoma, Washington. They were on Suicide Squeeze for a long time. Uh, they put out like eight records. They're a really good math rock band. Look them up. They just they just called it quits a couple of years ago, but they were excellent. And you I had never heard math, of them before. Math rock? Math rock. Yeah, like deliberately intricate, complicated, but like not just because it's complicated. Like they're just a great math band, like really, really good. And they opened up for them and I had never heard of them before. And this is another thing that we're going to get into. I don't know how much time we have, but like the sort of expected no, like I think the internet is this terrible place where everyone just expects you to know everything about everything all the time. We have to deconstruct pretty much every other sentence, right? Right. Like, so like I, it, a lot of people I worked with then after I met Beach Slang was like how I, it was sort of implied, like I should just always know who they were, know all of their records, know his entire tour history and their entire story. I had never saw or heard of them before. I saw them at minus the bear. Okay. Just for an example. Right. So never you, people got to give people a little more credit to like acknowledge that like not everybody knows everything about everything. Right. So uh, I did the two songs. Uh, I came in there completely cold. I mean, I knew the, the material they were working on, but I had never met the guy before James Alex. And already then it was sort of like, I should have seen some of the signs of the stuff we'll get into coming, but like, it was, it's not uncommon when you get to a point where you're signed and you're touring that, people come and go, right? That's just how it goes. It's a grind. Even if you have a paycheck and you have a steady job, job, finger quotes, like it's just hard to do that lifestyle on the road, unless you're really well compensated, like, you know, John Mayer or something, right? If you're the drummer for John Mayer's band, you're probably doing pretty well by well, meaning like you can afford to live as your only job, be his drummer. Right. But for the 98.2% of other people who try to play a musician, be a musician or an artist or any sort of creativity thing as a job, it is extraordinarily hard to do full time, just is. So if I just Googled something because I was lazy and didn't, in 2016, his entire original band quit on the guy mysteriously after a show happened where they all yelled and got at each other's throats and then they all called it a quits. And he came back as James Alex of Beach Lang, kept with the name and it was like his proprietary project, right? So everybody else in the band was a hired gun, a hired help right it's a job you're not in this project you have no fealty to the material you have no points on anything no creative control whatsoever which is fine like whatever i was eager to have a job right so i crush that session did a really good job on it it's on bridge nine records it's on the mpl scp it's out there on bridge nine uh was well received it was just a couple of covers from bands in minneapolis and thought nothing of it you know like half a year goes by I get a text message or a Facebook message from their then their then manager, Charlie, uh, in summer of 2019, like, hey, Steve, uh, this is a tough ask, but would you want to come on tour with us in the fall and open up for Beach, uh, open up for the, the Goo Goo Dolls? And I was like, yes. Like, what do you say when you're 31 years old, 32 years old then, and like had never really had a real full-time job in the game? What's the answer to that question, guys? What do you say when you're presented with that opportunity? Yeah. yeah. And your job is the producer of morning bull. I think that, uh, I mean, it's still a nice job, but you're, you, you can go chase a dream. So, and you know, the hardest part was just say, yes, the shows are booked. <laughs> it's with a real legit. I mean, we've all heard of them at least, right. The Google dolls are like a real pretty famous band. Uh, so I was like, well, sure. Yeah, that's amazing. Let's do that. So I blew out the rest of the vacation time I had at my job. I talked to my boss then who also got fired well, this is all intertangled into just a tough beat here, but um, uh, yeah, John Hager, my boss then, I'm like, hey, I have this opportunity, and I said yes. He's like, okay, we'll figure it out, and I did four weeks on the road with them in the fall of 2019, sold out shows, everything booked, a van that worked, a meal every night, a hotel every night. And what was the no biggest venue? Uh, a couple thousand people. They were never like a normal like venues in terms of capacity. But I mean, I played at the Orpheum in Minneapolis. I played at the, uh, um, I don't know, or in Milwaukee, that was either way. Uh, I played at the Von Braun uh, Theater in Huntsville, Alabama, like the Nazi rocket guy, Von Braun, like he made it for real, like, look it up. Yeah, like he made an art donation to Huntsville, Alabama, where they were space camp. I don't know. That was cool. Um, I don't know. It was amazing. Tropicana Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. And this City. was Goo Goo Dolls uh, headliner? Headlining, or did that not yeah. Yet? The, okay, yeah, so. no, this was the Miracle Pill 2019 North American leg. And we did like gotcha. three and a half, four weeks. Uh, and, you know, all sold out. We played it uh, across the street from the National Theater in Richmond, Virginia, where Jimmy World, my all-time fucking favorite. Can I swear on this? 
Yes. Am I allowed to do that? Okay. Yes. My all-time fucking favorite band was across the fucking street in, in, on a Tuesday in Richmond, Virginia. Jimmy Eat World was there across the goddamn street, and they had toured together. I guess they all knew them, which was amazing. And then I got to go meet them and have dinner with Jay Mackins, and they brought us out of their side stage, and I got to watch my favorite band on the side of the stage. And I was like, holy crap, this actually might happen. Uh, the, the dudes from that band, Japan Droids, have you heard of them? Yeah. They were there hanging out because they're from Charlottesville, Virginia not too far away and his wife was going to graduate school at uva or something i don't know he was there they were fine they were cool you're and networking like, you're making connections exactly right but the whole idea was that like okay we'll do this three four weeks and see how it goes and i had a couple more shows december of that year and we'll see what happens i wasn't and expecting then, to get the full-time run the, the, where the, did the, it go wrong so i got an offer to do the full-time tour when he did this the, the next record that came out in january of 2020 I did that percussion on that record too. There are the drummer couldn't do it, but I, I was close to even getting the drums on that job. But so I got the, the, the full-time offer in December of 2019 to go on tour full-time in March. It was like seven weeks, full booked, full U S and I'm like, well, here we go. I'm going to quit my job. Right. Like, like I made it, it made it in the sense that like, here's what I want to do. I got, I got there. And I'm going to leverage this opportunity and other opportunities eventually, right? You'll meet other booking agents. This is now your management. career. Ho well, hopefully, right? I mean, at, at, least, the time, I'm, at the time, I'm sure you're thinking it is, right? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I don't know. Like, you, you never assume anything, but I was going to do whatever responsibilities I had for Beach Slang for that whole, that whole album. We had European dates booked. There was stuff in Australia on them, like a whole 18 month slate of like dates to do. And <laughs> Oh, motherfucker. So the strangest thing happened in March of 2020, guys. I don't know if you heard about it. Tell us. Well, I don't know if you've heard about a global pandemic, but like I didn't have that one on my fucking didn't get here. card. It didn't get Maybe that was something in Charlotte, but that didn't get here. Yeah, I didn't have a massive, unconscionably terrible world tragedy on my, you know, fucking bingo card. And my last day at work at 97 Rock was February 28th, 2020. And I'm like, we'll ride it out for a couple of weeks. The first day of the show was like March 8th. That was the first day of the scheduled tour. We were going to play South by Southwest. We had a whole thing. And, you know, March 7th, March 8th rolls around. The virus gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. And then by whatever that was, St. Patrick's Day, we called the tour. Uh, we'll look at it in the fall, guys. I don't know. We'll talk to you in a couple of months, see what's going on. That was September of 2020, right? world doesn't get better everything still continues to suck i am digging garbage at my buddy's recycling warehouse i'll give them a plug buffalo computer recycling on clinton street uh take uh, all your re electronic recycling needs there good people there i called my buddy rick who runs the shop in a panic because i didn't have a job i didn't have a fucking job i quit my job for no fucking reason to go on a tour that never happened so i lost my dream job on a fucking pandemic um, and then Christmas of that year rolls around somewhere around there, mid December. <laughs> oh, fuck. And their manager, Charlie, she calls me up and she's like, Hey, look, I just want to let you know, I left James. I can't work with this guy anymore. He's been abusing me the whole time, the whole thing. Like I, if you want to Google the allegations, they're out there. But at the time she told me this, it wasn't public yet. And it wasn't my truth to tell, you know what I mean? What was I got to fucking say? So, I'll give a like, little thumbnail here. It is uh, easily Googleable. Like I uh, had mentioned earlier, Rolling Stone covered this, Billboard, uh, every major Brooklyn vegan uh, industry publication. But uh, so James NPR. Alex was accused of uh, you know. inflicting emotional and psychological abuse on uh, on his uh, on the on the manager who was yeah, uh, Charlie in contact. Yeah, and uh, and then around that time, uh, James Alex tried to take his own life and was uh, in a inpatient uh, treatment facility and said at the time, and I think it's held up to be uh, true uh, to date that he was leaving the music business altogether and uh, he wasn't going to do music anymore. And um, that didn't help Steve Trippy at all. It's a bad beat, you know, and like, what are you going to do? Like, I mean, I'm not laughing at the guy's misfortune, but it, I mean, no, I mean, I'm not. Uh, and, and the whole thing is like, I support her and I believe what she was saying. And like, I just peaked my mic there. I apologize. I, I, I don't know. It's a tough beat. It is what it is. I'm never going on tour. It's never going to happen. I have the opportunity. How are you, how are you in the music and uh, music getting along these days? 
Well, I mean, I moved, I relocated with my girl to Charlotte because she had family here and we were going to try to leverage those connections to try to like reestablish, start over somewhere. You know what I mean? That was like kind of the plan. Um, I'm in commercial audio visual sales. Didn't see myself doing that. Uh, so long story short, I go into a practice studio down the street and play alone in a room with no windows by myself. Uh, that's fun or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm not really playing much beyond alone in a room. Um, it's tough, but like, you know, the virus is still bad and you never know what's going to happen with bands on the road anyway, but you know, I'm 35, it's been two and a half years. The opportunity came and went, I kind of feel like if it was going to happen, it was going to be then. Um, I, I, I feel for Charlie. I, I didn't want her to endure that. You know, when I was on the road with them, I, you know, you gotta understand, like, I don't want to sound flippant or un insensitive to what happened, you know, because I think making it, oh, what was me just kind of takes to, I don't want to not acknowledge what may or may not have happened. You know what right. I mean? Because so like, we don't want to minimize somebody else's suffering. That's a better way of putting it. Thank you. Yeah. So like, it, so all that's baked into how, like, I feel like shit for feeling like shit about it. Um, and you know, what are you going to do, man? Like Scotty, our bass player is in dashboard confessional. I don't know if you heard of them, but like, you know, he's had a full-time gig his entire career. He's been played stadiums in Brazil and shit. Like, he can't help you, a brother out. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, I it's, <laughs> it's just weird. You know what I mean? It's just a weird thing. Cause I only knew these people like three weeks, you know what I mean? And like, right. I think I earned their respect or what have you, but it's just like, I just didn't get the, that step to actually really actualize it to get um, the footing. Yeah. And you know, them's the breaks. What are you going to do? It them's the breaks. Like I, you know, it, we've all, everybody that's listening or not listening to this has had had some terrible thing happen for this crisis, right? Like you've may have lost, lost, lost loved ones have had permanent, problems because of a COVID infection. I have no idea. You know what I mean? Like if the worst thing that happened to me was that I lost my job that I was unhappy with because life sucks. And then I lost my other job because I really wanted it, but life sucks. Like, what are you going to do? It's just a job. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to stay well-rounded about it. Cause like, that's the only way that I don't lose my mind, but yeah, I quit, I quit cumulus. And then they replaced me immediately with a guy who you guys know pretty well. Can I, can I say his name or is that, sure. I mean, is, is it weird? So Bobby Rosati mm -hmm. was like your producer, I think, right at, at 1270, the fan. Did a and knobs. so he, you know, he was working there and was sort of like the me where he just was so eager and we really wanted an opportunity that he just took my job immediately. Immediately. I was immediately replaced and they don't have a budget to just hire you back. So I got fucked out of my old job and got fucked out of my new job. Isn't Bobby a musician? Could you guys tour together? Oh, I have no idea. It, does he play? I don't even know. I it's think something. he does. I think it was a singer, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But you we'll get Joel Staniszewski involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you, you, you know Joel? Yeah. Well, you know Joel. Is he's like the like odds maker Joel? Yeah, yeah. He's a he's in a um he's in like a scream metal band. He's the yeah, lead singer. I would, I would imagine. Yeah. No, he was. Yeah. He he's an OG. He was in a band called Holy Angels back in the day when I was a kid. If that would have been name, you would even remember. He played drums in that band. He was good. I, no I kidding. Oh yeah. Like he's an OG. He was in like hardcore bands and stuff when in the nineties, like when I was in elementary school, you know what I mean? Like he goes back. Did you know so, this Jonah? I mean, I know the stories I mean, that Joel I has know, told yeah, us. Only, and, only from what he said on the show and what you've said on the show about his musical history. That's all I know. I didn't know that dropping his name is a, is a musical reference. I just thought that this is a guy who, maker. Odds maker yeah. Joel, right? Yeah, yeah. Because right. because I remember on the remember, line from Vegas. I remember when he went to Vegas was like a big deal then. It was like oh three, maybe oh four. Like I was in high school, but yeah, he was in a band that like my old band, Wide of the Mark, when I was in high school. We played a show. We played a fucking that was a, that was a fun little day. We okay. There was a store in the mall called Zoomies. Is that still a thing? I don't even know if they're still open. I think so. Okay, I, I think it's a yeah. store that still exists. I mean, the mall is closed half the stores, but so, so the whole thing is like I don't understand time anymore because I'm old. Like 20 years ago was 2002, right? That's fucked up. So 2002, I was a freshman in high school. Zoomies was opening in the mall, and there was a punk rock show at the fucking mall at the Galleria, I swear to God, it was like Sears, but it hadn't been opened yet. So they hollowed out like the wide open warehouse of Sears. Like it was a store, but it wasn't a store yet. And they just rented the stage from STEM, STMM, STEM from Niagara Falls. I don't know if you guys know those dudes. I could go about all band, local bands all day. I'll just fucking drop names. So STEM, <laughs> STEM had, STEM had uh, like their stage, finger quotes, was just like a bunch of like wrestling tables, like folding tables like pro wrestling folding tables. 
I swear, my hand of God, this is what that's what we played on. And I was 14 and thought, or 15 and thought like nothing of it. But yeah, we played with Holy Angels, which was Joel Joel's band and some other band. I don't remember. And we played the opening, the grand opening of like Zoomies at like Saturday afternoon at the Galleria Mall. 20 fucking 20 years ago. So wow. there's that. That should tell still you be my, on your resume. Couldn't tell you my bank account number, but I could tell you, you know, a show I played when I was a fucking child. So my life is going great, Tim. How are Do you, you? want to get back into sports? I mean, is that, is that a possibility? Sports could meaning you, like could what? Could you, could, or could have sports what, What's the Charlotte radio industry oh. like? You know, it's weird. Well, I Radio I, industry I, in general is in, is in a weird spot. but It is. You know, um, it, 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 there's some locally owned stations here, which is There's so like much sports really down there, both pro and college, you know? Um, I, I, I'll be careful about how much I can say, but I did talk to some people who have Western New York ties that are that work for a classic rocket station there. And in a major market, 2 million people, 2, 3 million people, what they call a PPM, personal player monitor market. For those in the, uh, not in the biz, that literally is like a device that one would wear from Nielsen or Arbitron that measures what you are listening to and reports that information back to the powers that be to, to gain ratings. In Buffalo, what was called a diary market, which is <laughs> the most flawed and totally made up and backed by nothing system. Do you guys know the diary? You know what the diary I, was? I did it once. They give you like three crisp $1 bills in the mail and you have to you have write to, all the radio stations down that you listen to. You write yeah, in you a, can write a, down whatever you want. You could write in whatever you want in a ledger about what you listened to that week. And that was how I determined whether or not I still had a job. It was the numbers of somebody had to write in a ledger and a diary, literally. And that was how they gained our numbers, whatever they were over the course of the years of it. And Buffalo will never be a PPM. But sure, it's a PPM market here. But it's, dude, it's actually leaner. It's worse. It's amazing. So many stations now are not even local at all. Like a lot of it's syndicated or a guy is doing... 28 stations in some studio in Dallas, you know, and it's like, but he had some of the fan, and, you know, he does like, you know, the breeze, you know, that was Sonny came home, Sean Colvin coming up. It's, you know, whatever, whatever it was, whatever it is. And then just do the next thing. It's voice tracked. So like, because there's no local identifiers or if the local identifiers were all just big voice guy, pre-recorded bullshit anyway, you, you just never know. So like a major market has one finger quotes, one live, talent a, a day one person and does one live shift and the rest is all from do they have sports talk there they do um but you know a lot of it's uh, like you know your cowherds right the, the syndicated stuff right and then the, the local guys there's a few stations but they're 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 book solid i've i've tried you know what i mean a lot of there's just no jobs there's nobody well, then let's take time. this opportunity to talk sports steve you don't get the opportunity to do it i don't what do you think about your bills and your sabers um you know, I, I think the Buffalo Bills are a really refreshing take on a winner because, like, you have to understand my entire run at 97 Rock, especially when, when I started there in 2011, we had the Bills contract. We were the right. That was the, the official of, Bills station. We, we right. were the voice of the Bills in the and, you know, we had to be positive about a team that was six and ten and fucking terrible all the fucking time. They were terrible every year forever okay do you have any good stories about that steve as to what management or what kind of discussions were had about you know hey let's we can't do this we can't uh, make fun of that uh hey we just got a call from russ brandon and he's pissed off admittedly i will say this at least in my experience no i will be to be fair to the powers that be i never had a note about uh anything i had said or presented about the bills as that's too much to be in the interest of fairness. I will say that I can't say I was directed in a content level beyond what I did. I did the best I could to show deference to like Jim Kelly, but he didn't like me. If you, I don't know if Jim listens or do we have a relationship with him at all? Is I, don't, that, I, I doubt, I don't think, I, I don't think Jim's listening. I, I mean, he was on the show every day, every Monday forever, maybe his family members, but not he, Jim. He didn't like me because I had the audacity to ask a team at the time that was terrible forever why are they terrible forever? And like, he didn't like that. Cause I, but he, it was complicated for him. Cause he was like a former, he's like an employee of them. He's like an ambassador. So he right. has to couch it. And I, I understand that. But to me as a fan who at the t again, at the time, this is 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, just forever. They're just always shitty, always fucking shitty. And they always blow it all the fucking time. And I have to be the asshole. I have to be the prick Jim, you know, uh, Tyrod threw another pick today. 
And, you know, it was 92 part yards passing, bro. 92 yards passing. Like, what, what's going on, man? Is this guy ever going to make it? Well, Steve, you're like, no, dude, like, here's the number. It is a fact. It is a point of fact. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have to show a fact to back up my opinion. My opinion was Tyra Taylor sucked. And, uh, and then Jim Kelly had to tell me why he didn't suck. And this was every day of my life. And he made more money a year. I will say this, and I know this for a fucking truth. And if anybody comes at me, they're a fucking liar. He made more money in 97 Rock in a year than I did. He did one 15-minute show every week for 16 weeks. And he made more money a year than I did. So fuck him. Sorry, you could you could cut that out. You could cut that out if it if it's not no. cool. But that is an absolute that, that is an absolute fucking truth. I know that the best part of the show so far. I, I know that absolutely undeniably true. He made more money than me, and I worked a job. Fuck. Sorry, I'm just if you couldn't tell, I'm kind of bitter about the whole thing. That's all right, man. How did doing that show and covering the team in the way that you did in the sports radio that you did do affect your fandom? Has it changed or altered how you view the teams now that's a good question jonah um no i mean i I've, I've i'm invested i've always been a fan i i want them to win i always i said this every day on the show i wanted them to be good i want them to be good but when the sabers lost again for the 28th time in a row like what how do you spin that like what are you supposed to say it's just so depressing and bleak and hopeless like everything so like that's just like part of it so the fact that the bills are winners now in a certain way is like really refreshing, but I'm not in the game anymore. I don't actually get to do anything with it other than watch. And that, that's cool, but I do miss the, the grind of it. I miss being able to talk to the coach. I'd be maybe able to, t- to have, you know, analysts like you, Tim, would be on our show a few times. Like it, it was a fun grind. And there was a couple times. I mean, we made, they made the playoffs in 2017. That was a fun little run. And then they were terrible in that game, predictably, right? They, what did they score? Three points against the Jaguars, right? And like, that was, that was a rough day the next day. And I said it on the air. Like, I don't want to see Tyrod Taylor ever play another game for the bills turn to turn out to be right. But even then I asked Jim Kelly the same question and he was like, Oh, I think you're just too harsh, Steve. Okay. I was right. But like, I get it. Like, you gotta be nice. You gotta be like friendly or whatever. And like, I just wasn't in the mood for that. Um, so like when I, that microphone was on, I had to be objective. That was my, that was my goal. I never wanted to be a Homer because I thought the fans deserved honesty. Are you um, able to watch the Bills games or cuz I'm sure they're not on you have to compete with the Panthers and whatever else but are you do you have a, a Bills bar that you go to or something okay, like that? occasionally you know we went to the the only times we went out last year cuz it was just so bro oh my god there's this place called the Tavern on the Tracks here which is a Bills bar it's pretty famous in the in town um cool atmosphere but the food was only so so and like it was just bro yeah really bro if you know what i mean by that like a certain clientele that i don't really identify with and it was the jacksonville game which was just terrible they were just terrible all day and it was like so frustrating because the, the bill side of the bar which was like 75 percent of it like there's a million false starts and everyone's i'm screaming at the tv like false start false start what the fuck are they doing throw the fucking flag right like that kind of thing like it's just so when the, when it's close and you're and they're struggling and like stupid things like that just irritate you so we left and then the other game that I went out for, I had to play in South Carolina, not too far from us, uh, was the Jets, was the Indianapolis game. So the two worst, the two worst losses of the year were the only times I went out for the games. But luckily, a friend of mine has the ticket, so he would host us at his place. Or um, and they're on the, prime time a lot. You get and to they see were on them prime on, time a lot. That's on right. your regular cable or your, your dish or whatever. You don't need the you don't need to watch. They're they're not automatically a one o'clock kickoff anymore like they used to be. Yeah. So being good is just, it, it, it's weird, right? You can watch the game over the air. We watch the, the, the NBC games or the late the late afternoon games over the TV. So like, it's been a refreshing take to just to sit back and enjoy it. Cause Josh is so good and they're probably going to be really good this year. I mean, it's exciting. It's weird to be like, yeah, they're like the favorite. And like, you know, you're dissecting 13 seconds again. Cause what else are you going to talk about on a local show back home? And like, I get it, but you know, like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's fun. And I think the hardest thing is like, enjoy the, enjoy it in the moment. And despite the end being sad, I think too much, too often, so much of this is wrapped up in the result. So much is you be happy because this team won a championship in the NFL, which is an extraordinarily high standard. Very, 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 very hard to do. Very, 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 very hard. And it's also hard to be consistently good. And a lot of teams are really good and don't win. And I, and I know that I say that as like a loser because the team doesn't win. So I have to like couch it, but I really sincerely mean this. Like the bills were very good last year had an amazing season and they fell short, but that's okay because they were really, really good for a lot of it. And it's really hard to be really good. And I think I would still take the heartbreak I took on that January night for 
uh, 10 times over than seven and nine, six and fucking 10, five and 11, eight and eight, seven and nine every fucking year. You're not any good. And you beat the fucking Jacksonville Jaguars in week 16 who improved to six and seven or whatever the fuck. And you're just terrible. Like, I, I still think I would take losing in a heartbreaker and the greatest football games I've ever seen in my entire life. I think I would sign up for that. Because what's the point? The ride is the point. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, well, you know, that's all I got. It's about it's a, it's not always about the destination, but too much is wrapped up in the mythology of it, right? If Josh doesn't ever get a ring, oh, you know, he's one of the greats, but he's, he's super young. He probably will get there. And if he doesn't, what are you going to do? That's kind of well, where I'm at, man. Like, what are you going to do? Isn't the turbulence on the ride part of it, too? I wonder if the Bills have a great season or the great season they've been having. That Does that make the sports radio harder? Um, are you implying that the content is better when the team is worse? I am. Or, or maybe it's a little bit easier to come up with things to say. And I remember growing up with GR when the Bills were good. The guys like Art Wander and Chuck Dickerson, they were still finding things to complain about. It wasn't just praising the team for four hours on the morning drive see yeah that's a good question i don't know i i, I just he never like ex- I, jonah he never experienced the other side of it yeah <laughs> he, yeah he, he has I, nothing to compare it to I, yeah like really there were there was my experience was all negative right like the sabers i got the job in 97 rock in 2011 the last time they made the playoffs <laughs> my entire time at that place they've never they never made the playoffs they were terrible so like that's the point like I had to call it like I see it. And most of the time, the entire run, they were really bad or just mediocre, which is, I don't know, which is worse, but I get your point. I, I don't know if, do we have access to any of those personalities? Will any of those people do this show? No, those people being like WGR full-time personalities. No. Yes. Did I, I just, did I just so, throw a I don't brick know. into this meeting? No, I, I, you know, there was, um, there was a weird thing with, uh, what was, uh, intercom and I don't know if it still exists. Um, but, you know, I caught word that that uh, people from the athletic weren't allowed on intercom stations. And that wasn't necessarily a GR thing. It was a national thing. And Give I think the there tea. was some sort of pissing match of some kind. And uh, so, yeah, I haven't been on WGR in a long time, but I I get along great with those guys. I have beers with with uh, Chris Parker and, uh, you know, Nate Geary. And uh, we chat all the time. I mean, Sal Capaccio and. Paul Hamilton and I uh, still break each other's balls when we see each other. It's so, yeah, but being on air, it's a, it's a, there's a, there's some, there's like this unspoken thing that happened uh, a few years back and I don't really know the story about it. Yeah. See, that's interesting. Cause at least when I was there, like I was a part-time board monkey, I had no authority whatsoever. I did live content on the weekends and at night. And that was when they had no budget. They, that whole time I was there was the best of WGR. I would just talk to myself like and make goofy. So like, it was fun because I got good by learning on the fly, like what it was, sure. you know, but like, since I had left, they have a night show, they have a midday show. Like they, it's a lot different 10 years later. You know what I mean? And like, people wouldn't even know if I was even there. I was, it was a short run, but I learned a lot, but like, I, I would say that even like the Buffalo news then, wouldn't be something you would like cite in the paper. It, it, like if like your old pal, if you remember Bucky Gleason, right? Like mm-hmm. I got a certain, it was positioned to me that I should position it as it's reported that the bills or the Terry Pagula is buying the Sabres because of the memorandum of like Bucky, Bucky had that, had that story. He was the, but first you weren't person. allowed to give him credit. It, it, I, I, and that's I, not I, necessarily a intercom thing. That's, I think some, we had a boss at the Buffalo news who, if it, if we didn't report it, it didn't happen. So if let's say the Rochester DNC, if Leo Roth uh, had an exclusive interview with Ralph Wilson and he said something newsworthy, it didn't, it didn't happen. See, but that's like needlessly dumb though. What are you, you don't give your audience any credit that they can go boop, 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 boop. Well, now it's the other way around and the Buffalo news is aggregated. It just takes everybody's content. Well, but that's because of the world we live in and no one pays. Oh fuck. I want to talk about this. How much, how much just to get people to click on, to get, to come to the website. You know, there's a lot of that. Well, because like, but if the issue is specific, like if GR would cite ESPN or the Dallas morning news for a report, but not the Buffalo news, that's a little more Right. Well, that's, and that's what that, that, so the Buffalo news will aggregate everybody except the competition. So they'll, they still, they did, they won't acknowledge anything written by the athletic or by um, maybe I don't want to say. I've seen them credit you by name. It's, it's maybe done less, but I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. 
and and but that's the thing it's like the way we consume content and consume media has changed so nobody much cares. even in the last 10 years nobody pays okay. any attention the reader doesn't care i can't yeah. tell you the number of times people tell me you know that it, they run into me and say they like that story of mine that they read in the buffalo news last week and but you have a, and you you left the news when it's four years ago yeah see and, and i mean that's the thing it happens though, like, it happens at least twice a month and I think that's super interesting, though, because like you had such a cachet and like a huge pull. And I remember like when it was controversial that you were on the two bills drive board for like three minutes. And then like everybody gave you so much shit on the two bills drive board that you're like, yeah, I have a job, guys. I'm done. It was like right. one day. Yeah, my right? name is on this. You can you can say whatever you want anonymously. And, uh, and do yeah, that. so I was like, yeah, I thought See, I was doing something. Uh, I thought it, I, I liked the idea of it. It, it was good. But you were yeah. going to say I got you excited about something. Oh, something popped well, into OK. Your head. So I don't know how much more time we have because I feel like I'm on a I'm on a bit of a, a loop here. But uh, OK, the newspaper. The physical newspaper, does it exist still? Is it still in print, the Buffalo News? Yes. Yeah. OK, Do you, still seven days a week, too, which is probably the next thing really? that will come is that, you know, they'll yeah. eliminate days. That's, that's I don't have any was, inside information on that, but that's just kind of the way newspapers are going. It was right, a big deal that, like, that comes out five days a week. It was a big deal like years ago when the New Orleans Picayune or whatever became a not everyday paper. I think I remember that was like a story. Right. Well, because like like the Tennessean or the uh, there's a paper in or in Oregon, the Oregontonian or something that like does really important local investigatory work. And that's high budget. It costs money to do that. And right. they break stories about lead in the water or like corruption. And, and like most local reportage is just like gone now. Like it doesn't exist because local news is all corporate run and there's no budget there either. It's a terrible environment. But I still okay. think that the Buffalo News is doing a pretty good job with those types of stories. Well, that's, um, that's important. It, the actual stuff that's happening in the world. A that's lot of the things negative. that people like to subscribe to a newspaper for are gone. Um, what do we got there? The Waterloo Buffalo. Waterloo Berry Seltzer. It's pretty tasty. I, I don't think I don't know that we have that Waterloo. I mean, we I don't I'm have just a I'm a polar a polar I, guy. I like polar, but we don't have Wegmans here, which is a fucking shame. Danny, if you're listening, Danny Wegman, yo, come on, two million people, let's also, go. What do they have in Charlotte? What do we, everybody loves Publix. their supermarkets, right? Publix. Publix. Well, Publix. I liked Publix. It's fine. It exists. You know, Harris Publix Teeter was good when I was like, in okay. my, when I was in Florida. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing as good as Wegmans. There you go. There's a, there's a plug for you. Danny, come on. Let's go. Let's see if I can get some uh, some sponsorship. Oh, by the way, I, I'd like to announce uh, to everybody listening. Oh, new reads. Um, that uh, CTBK has re-upped uh, with uh, Tim Graham and friends for another year. As they should. Uh, just learned that today. And uh, grateful for CTBK and their sponsorship of the show and, and helping to underwrite a little bit of local sports journalism uh you know what this is a i listen to this podcast when i'm lifting and i just have interesting thoughts i'm sorry this, when you're what when i'm like working out which is like Did you say lifting yeah but like not like at crossfit or anything actually competitive it's just like at planet fitness when i'm trying to convince Take myself that now. i'm getting in shape uh do we get you like fired up for the big sets are there certain segments there's no there's no like free weight at planet weight? fitness oh. why did i say that i don't know i'm gonna get an emblem based for this have you ever set off the lunk listens. alarm no, but it, I've seen it go off. I thought it was like a pastiche. It actually does work. What Practical alarm? Effects. <laughs> Jonah, well, you can I've explain never what been this there, is. but I've heard about uh, Planet Fitness has the lunk alarm if you had to drop the weights or grunt. Or, if you know, grunt like, or like do anything vaguely bro -y, like you will get like cited because this is a non gym intimidation environment. Like it's supposed to be no, ju no judgment. Anyway, um, so okay, the physical newspaper, right? So like I. Tim Graham in the circa 1999 to 2002 was a newspaper courier for the Buffalo news, AKA a paper boy. Yeah. Do you, do you have any concept of the challenge of how impossibly hard that job was when you're fucking 13? Oh, I did. Oh, sure. I about that age. Like it was like abuse. Like, can I just say that? Like your newspaper profiteered off of child labor, bro. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like that's straight well, up. It's like, not that's pretty common. I think every newspaper had teenage paper boys. Not right? anymore, right? Not they, anymore. Don't they not it's have? A a, it's yeah. all adults. And it's cars. all adults, right? Right. Because in fucking zero degree snow, it's really hard to walk through three feet of snow with a newspaper. But I did it. Two thousand when we had two and a half feet or whatever around Christmas, I had snow up to my knees. I got phone complaints for delivering the newspaper because we didn't get them for three hours, and the old lady at the door was like, "Where's my newspaper, uh, ma'am? Do you have a window?" Yes. Go ahead and do a favor. Just look out the window. Why? 
because there's a fucking blizzard outside lady like yeah like i up a hill i'm not even kidding i got up every fucking day not a day off not a fucking day off i got up every fucking day and did the newspaper monday through friday until four o'clock and then every saturday and sunday morning every fucking day for like four years i had a newspaper route like what's wrong with me what'd you get paid for that oh god i don't know like well, my so mom oh, go ahead i was just gonna say i did it for maybe a year and a half and i didn't think delivering the paper was that bad although the seven Sundays. day burden could catch up with you if you didn't have people to help you out or substitutes. My, but my, the worst yeah. part of the job was collecting the money. Oh, the collecting Knocking was on a, these old people's doors oh. and begging for $3 and 25 cents. And one lady would give me an extra nickel and make sure I put it in a different pocket like that. So you got paid as much as people would tip on top of that money and how dogged you were in collecting that money. That's right. And there was inevitably always the fuck, the family at the end of the street that just was never home and you just ate it every every yeah, week. Like you right. had the little stubs, right? The little card cardboard stubs or whatever. Yes, yes. And like there would be weeks of a time that it just wouldn't pay. But oh yeah, no, like I don't know, like forty, fifty dollars a week, maybe. Does that sound close to it? Maybe ninety on a good week. That sounds about on, right. Fifty bucks a week on a fifty good bucks week. a week. Yeah. And then like Christmas calendar, every kid did the Christmas calendar thing where you went to every house, not just the ones that paid by the ones that paid by mail fucked you because you got a surcharge for everybody that paid through the mail and you didn't get to have to go to collect to them and they wouldn't tip you. I am I have I am bitter about my paperboy job. I need to talk to someone. Yeah, yeah but you would then you would go to every house on the street and get the Christmas calendar. You're more worked up bucks. about this than you are uh, uh, James Alex and uh, and what happened with the uh, beach lane. Because I think about it now and I was like 15, 14 years old and like trudging through blizzard snow and muck and rain every day and like somehow didn't lose my mind. I thought nothing of it. And I think back now, I'm like, why did I do that for so long? Four years. And like my asshole brother's pa- friends would like drive their car into the p- paper box because you got like the box at the, they don't have this anymore. There was a bin that you would have at the corner of your street, right? At the end of your house. Right? Which and I always would, thought looked like uh, a dump, you know, like that was always a bad look. The big Buffalo evening Buffalo news, news box with box. weeds going awful around yes. it. And, and like people were right. assholes. My friend, my brother's friends would literally like, drive into it as a joke. I'm not, I, hand to God, like Doug Lasky drove into it and drove back and then drove into it again, just to like rile me up. Mighty taco wrappers. People would throw mighty taco in my thing all the all the time. Like once a week, it'd be like bugs in it because it, I have anxiety about my paper route from 20 years ago. What is wrong with me? I don't know. The media wanted, has not been good to you. The media I, industry. I know. Newspapers, I was a, radio. All I mean, this. I remember I was delivering through September 11th when the planes hit the towers. I had to do that day. That was a fun day. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I don't know. It was a long time ago, obviously. But I just think about it now, and it's like they don't let kids do it. They don't let kids do it anymore. Why? Right. It's probably a massive insurance problem. Now but they have, do it out of their cars. And I think some of this is because there's less people getting the paper, but you have a bigger route and you drive from house to house. I, every, every year I wanted to do like newspaper delivery guy, horror stories on the morning show. And like, everyone would be like, who cares about that, Steve? No one can relate. And I'm like, no, I swear to God, we will get people. There's every, a lot of us out there. A lot. There's a, there's a brigade. There's a, 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 a millennial, it's a niche millennial topic of like 30 something dudes who are scarred for life from the time they fell on their skates uh, when they were skating, delivering the newspaper. And then inevitably like the babes walking home from school saw you. And then you got to like pick up yourself. I go, I didn't fall. Fuck. And then, you know, you get up and you're bleeding from your leg, but then, you know, you just got to shake it off because, you know, Katie saw you. I, I think you're onto something. I think you could do like a six part narrative podcast on <sighs> delivering newspapers in the nineties and all and, the horror stories. So we'll do the horror story, the, the, the award winning, uh, what, what are they called? What's the slate one that wins all those awards? And uh, we'll have, uh, and then we'll do another obsolete job. Like the one hour cleaner, the horror stories from the one hour cleaner one businesses hour cleaner. that don't exist anymore. It'll be an, it'll be award winning multi level podcast, and then yep. inevitably the Hulu documentary for the Apple Plus yep. docu soap, right? Jared Leto right. will play me, you know, and and Hathaway will play my high school girlfriend, and it'll be you know it'll win all the awards. I'll allow it. I, I also <laughs> delivered the Metro Community News, and that was even worse. Fuck yeah, the Metro it. Community News, the penny saver. Yep. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I was just, my phone just buzzed. I apologize. No, that's uh, all right. So I think we've said all there is to say. I really, is, this there is, any, the, is there anything more you want to talk about, Steve, while we have I, you? I could go forever. You want to I mean, talk about your, do you want to mention, do you want to get into your bills and what, what has you excited? Not just the, the, uh, the, the idea that they're good again uh, and, and how you never got to experience it in Western New York, but what, uh, 
Anything that, how about this? Here's, here's a question to ask when you have a team that's really good, like the Bills are. We don't really have a lot of position battles to, to get into. Uh, what worries you about the Bills? Oh, um, I don't know. I think the Jordan Poyer thing is a concern. If he's going to, if he's actually going to resign or not, that's, that's a, I mean, it's hard when you have a good team, how many people do you pay? Right. Because you have the, the salary cap is a concern um, injuries, but you can't really predict those. I would say is Dorsey up to snuff, right? We don't really know if he's good or bad at it yet. And inevitably, inevitably there'll be some decisions, some fourth down thing that goes wrong. Right. And then it'll, they'll lose a close one and he should have gone for it. He went for it and they didn't get it. It was the wrong call. Something like that will happen. And then everybody will be at each other's throats, you know, and they're 12 and two or something. And it's like, it doesn't even matter, but like, you know, wait for that. Wait for the one bad day where they make the wrong or call. Or if it happens early and right. we get the idea where the fan base and, and the media too, where if, if it becomes established early, that this could be a problem. Like if he's able to get through a few weeks, without any blunders, then I think that's kind of, that's a, that's some momentum that takes you through the season. But if there's some hiccups early, then they, those will be extra scrutinized and yeah. kind of held as fact for the entire season. No, you're, you're uh, dead on. And I think um, uh, the schedule is very challenging in the first half of it. So if they can go like, I don't know, four and two or something like that, like there's a lot of tough ones. You got the Ravens, you got the, uh, I don't know. Start the with the Rams. the Rams this is not going to be an easy game. Um, but they're a good team and they have good players. I mean, like Von Miller, I think is a good addition despite his age, you know? Um, and it's, you know, I, I enjoy it. Just enjoy the ride. I, I, I'm hoping so because I just don't yeah. like the stress of it is part of it. That's the whole thing. It's supposed Do to you be worry at all about the bills in the way that you and us and so many fans did for so many years that something bad's going to happen. The other shoe is going to drop. They're going to find a way to beat themselves. Or is that not a thing anymore because of how, well, they've played the last couple of years. Well, I mean, the last thing that happened was exactly that, right? They beat themselves in a famously tough last 13 seconds, right? And I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, you, you, we can litigate that till you're blue. I actually think what's more unfortunate is the, the overtime. The overtime sucks. We wouldn't be talking about any of this if Alan at least had a chance to respond, right? You don't know what happens if you actually have an, an, an honest shot at both sides of the ball, right? All I want is four more plays. Give the give down a chance to respond. He scores. Great. Next score wins. I don't know. Figure that out. Didn't they change it? What are the rules on that now? I don't understand it. I think uh, the is, overtime. But only in the playoffs. I'm not totally versed on what the new rule is, but I think you it won't happen that way again. You'll get the ball back at least one time. I, I yeah, I, I don't the sudden death thing, I got at injuries, the, the players union, I'm sure inevitably like wants to have the games end as fast as possible, but like more football, more fun, man. I, I just play it out. What's the quarter? What's 10 more minutes, 15 more minutes, just play it to the end. And if they're tied again, then keep going. I don't know. Figure it out. Like I just, it's, I think football was done a disservice by not having Josh Allen have a chance to respond in overtime. It's just, it's just really unfair. And like, I don't know. I definitely see what you're saying. Like I, I'm warped and conditioned by negativity throughout my entire personal and professional life. Uh, bad breaks happen, man. It's all the time. I'm kind of living proof of that. I did nine years. I've been, I was a full-time broadcaster for nine and a half years. I can't get a job interview. No one wants to talk to me. How hard it is. Like I, my entire professional life, I'm 35. I don't have any other work history, really. I worked at my buddy's warehouse for a year and a half. I delivered pizzas when I was 18. My entire working life is in one field and I can't Newspapers, get, don't forget newspaper delivery. That was a newspaper delivery too. That's not on my resume, but it should. Uh, newspaper courier. Uh, yeah, it, it's very, very, very tough to... Um, actualize stuff that you want to do so i mean enjoy the season i can't believe it's already almost here it's crazy 2022 we're already almost we're more than halfway through it's, it's wild T time First day of camp is sunday three yeah. days oh you know what i don't know how much more time we have but like i think that the training camp thing ought to be reevaluated some turd on twitter that didn't like me i, I had the audacity to suggest that i think going to rochester for like six minutes is, is not worth it and he's like, it's about the fans in Rochester. You don't understand. It's giving them a bone to have to see their fans. Yeah, fuck off, dude. Drive 10 minutes down the street. What do you mean? Like, it's 90 minutes up the road for like 10 days. Did you ever watch? They made video. They made a content once. Their equipment guy spends like three days packing up their entire shit on a truck and hauling it to St. John Fisher. They're all of their professional equipment because the stuff at Fisher isn't sufficient for an NFL pro team, right? So why not just, here's a thought. Here's a crazy idea. Why not just have training camp where all their shit is 
and then have the Rochester fans drive the 90 fucking minutes to see their, their, their fans, fans. Like you go 10 days. It's like, what a waste of time. So, so-and-so is going to do the, Hey, look at me guys. I'm at, uh, I'm in say Jad Fisher. I'm in, here's my dorm room. Look at my thing. I'm going to hang out here for seven minutes. Like who gives a shit? Fuck yeah. Off. That's Sunday. That's the, uh, the cliche moving in day where Check people it out, are guys. coming in with their extra big mattresses and their TVs. And, and then their- like, and then like the media guys are all like, Hey, Rochester dude, selfie, bro. Click like, who gives a fuck dude? Like, dude, like, who, like seriously, who gives a flying fuck? Hey, okay. For you gotta those, eat your garbage plates. Yeah. You gotta have your garbage plates. Like at Pittsburgh, New York. I don't know if you've been there. Anyone listening hasn't been to Pittsburgh. It's a bougie white bread, difficult to navigate suburb that is twisty, turny and hard to get to. Why? Why do you think a rich, suburban neighborhood is purposefully difficult to get in and out of if you get what i'm getting at right and it's in this private college where you can't even get there because the media is so warped from no offense guys but you're so like warped from years of access that if you're a fan like me who doesn't have a press pass you have to drive 90 something minutes on the highway wait in line at a fucking public high school 35 minutes away to get a bus to go and then wait in line again to get through security to wait in line at the shitty churro stand to not get a seat in blazing hot sun to watch guys j- bounce around in fucking shorts so i say fuck say john fisher get the fuck out of rochester and fucking superhero day at 7 30 in the fucking morning who the fuck is going at 7 30 in the fucking morning no call all that a spade just go home just go to buffalo everybody it's there's plenty of parking there's plenty of access it's designed to hold seventy thousand people Ten thousand people are going to show up it'll be fine everybody get in out real easy it'll be a wonderful afternoon and instead you got to get up at 7 30 you got to get get up at five in the morning to drive 90 minutes to watch guys dick around in shorts for 30 seconds like what the fuck is the point of that if if it was anywhere else it would make sense but there's no parking lot you can't park there they won't let you do it why because some prick who is a self-entitled, sycophantic, self-important, sycophant- I said something, sycophantic already, uh, glad-handing douchebag who made ma- money hand over fist by lying to you for years, decided that I have to go to my alma mater and have this training camp there 20 years ago. Is that right? Is it not? Was that not a Russ Brandonism? That was, oh, a, yeah, that they, was a they had Russ it Brandon Fredonia marketing move. That. 20 but, but, years but, ago, everybody kind of went away for training camp. Yeah, it's not 20 years ago that's what i'm saying like it's isn't it just easier like it it's a revenue opportunity i understand that connor's and ferris or whoever the fuck spent yeah you want your uh you want your you know the bills have this multi-million dollar training facility with all that equipment in it and their trainers have their offices and their tables and their bikes and their what hot tubs and whatever and and but let's go cryogenic yeah let's go turn this gym uh into you know a locker room in case there's lightning because we got to come inside and yeah. And like, instead just for, for 10 days, they don't even go beyond the first preseason game. It, it's like, it's such a half measure either. Or if you want to go to Rochester then go and stay there until the end of preseason so that people can actually enjoy it and you get settled into a routine. And Sean McDermott, I know loves his practices at like every day, the same Yeah, he's, he's very regimented. And I respect that he's the boss, but like, again, eight 30 in the morning, dude, like that just sucks. That just blows for anybody. If you're Joe blow guy, you're regular, honest, 40 let's let's call it the, the 97 rock listener right 48 years old your man you don't like your job your wife's nagging you you got three kids and your life is unfortunately un- unhappy right you're gonna have to take a day off of work to go drive with your family and burn a whole vacation day to drive to rochester and overspend on the stupid fucking pretzel to have three hours to kill and then it's 11 30 and now you're in rochester the mustard city drink it in what are you going to do in Rochester for the rest of the day? So you get and drive back home, get on the 490 and head home. And now it's three 30. Good for you, dude. You just went in a loop for no reason. What is the point? What I think point? you're too well, cynical. Tim, you could answer this better than I can. If the bills move training camp back to Buffalo, would they have as many open practices at the stadium on the turf? I don't that's a good would. question. Well, that's a thing. And uh, the other issue being is there's no place for people to sit out at the practice fields. You know, so they would have to have if you wanted to have the practices open, you'd have to it's practice have in the stadium in the stadium, which that's practice. where they play the games. They, they play the games there. What's the difference? Um, they do one and they, they do one every year there, but I don't right. know if they do 12. Yeah, but it's at like 530 in the afternoon on like a Thursday. Like, dude, people, it, it's like uh, it's just such a. I will give Rex Ryan is a lot of things, but I will give him credit. He understood the entertainment value of the product. 
and we're going to have night practices. They're going to be at like seven o'clock and go to like nine 30 and people are going to enjoy it because you got out of work and you can get dinner and then go and I do it. I think Rex like doing everything later in the day. Respect yes. that. I respect that. No, fuck getting up. Getting up is fucking stupid. Fuck the morning. It sucked. I got up at 430 in the morning every goddamn day for like nine years. It was fucking terrible. Fuck it. You know what we have? We have these things called lights. We have electricity. You can just start the day later. Who gives a shit? There's a kick. 644-9797. There's a take. Why do we have the morning? Why couldn't we just start the day at like 11? Like everybody in Spain, they go and work from like 11 to three, take a nap for two hours, go back to work and then party to two in the morning and then do it again. And guess what? They're fine. Well, it's been there for, for like a thousand years. They're doing fine. A team that plays so many primetime games might want to practice at night once in a while. That's an, you know, there's an actual, actual, there's a point. There's a practice. There's a football point there. I just think, again, I just think St. John Fisher is a bougie white bread. It's self-important an inoculated suburb. I've been there. It's very difficult to navigate. Would you agree? They do PGA tournaments there, right? Oak Hill isn't that in Pittsburgh, right? There's a lot of golfing that goes on with the Bills people while they're out there. They get to do a lot of rounds of golf. Okay, Tim, what kind of people golf at that kind of facility? What kind of people? I'm Not just average. saying that that's part of the reason I think they like they like their, their golf. Yeah, but who you're not you're not taking the bait. You won't do it. No, I'm not. white people. Is that what you're getting? At? Rich, rich, right, white folk. Okay. It's a certain kind of environment that doesn't like common True. people. And it was made that way. Okay. That's the suburbs. That's what it is. It's a certain kind of environment. And football's for everybody. At least it should be predominantly black players, right? Like I don't need to get all like political right now, but I'm just saying, like, there's a reason that that, that neighborhood, Nazareth College, I I'm just saying, like it's it just irritates me. You it might be it's... right. I just wonder, is there a college in the city that would be suitable? I think, you know. No, there isn't. The only other thing would work would be like UB, which is the point. What's the point of going to UB when you could just do it in Orchard Park? There's no, unless they went further out east and went to Syracuse or something. But why would you do that? That's even less, that's even more of a hassle, right? The, the team has bled dry, the regionalization of the franchise. I guess we can leave it with this. Like I, I've, I resent multimillionaires, billionaires making us feel guilty for not buying their product that's overpaid and under worth it, especially for a very long time. I think the Sabres are still this way. It's expensive and it sucks. And like, you got to feel guilty that, oh, well, you know, especially with the, when Ralph got old, man, it was, you know, I, I don't know, guys, you know, we're, we got to, we got to move, we got to move the games to Toronto because like, it's really tough to do it here. You know, it's a small market and we only have so much corporate entity here and it's really hard to do it. Russ Brandon, you, you have a $20 million fucking salary, bro. Fuck off. No, you're wrong. They make money. I don't care. Like don't, add, don't hold the existence of the product hostage against its own fan base. I think that's a terrible sin. And I think the, the Rochester thing is it, is uh, an, uh, an appendage of that. Like we can't make it work where we are. So we have to go and expand and leech off of other people. And like the, the Rochester fans are the Rochester fans. Are anybody going to be there from Rochester? Not, not fans of the bills. If they're not having training camp there, what's the point of it now? Yeah. If they don't have training camp there, are you at risk of losing Rochesterians to the New York giants? No. You know, are they going to become jets fans? I, I mean, it would be what one, one percent, two percent. No. So like yeah. what, what how many people are going to go to a practice and say, oh, I better get season tickets. I really like this. This, this football seems pretty impressive. I, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. At this point, you've bled it all. You've got everything you can out of it. And like, good for you guys. You got creative and found a way to make it work. And I appreciate that. Like, you know, there's only so many Salino and Barneses or whatever they are, the Barnes firm now. Those accounts are very expensive, but there's like three of those. And in Charlotte, North Carolina, there's a lot more architects and a lot more commercial real estate and a lot more money here. There's Truist Bank, there's Bank of America, right? So there's just more money to be spent. And I understand that, but like, I don't want to, it's not my fault that the, the Buffalo is a depressed market and can't make it work. That's like nobody's fault. That's just like the world. It just sucks. You know, it's 250,000 people where they're lucky to have a team. And like, I just feel like that it, it's really unfortunate, especially Jonah, if you would say, I would think you're probably about my age, right? About that 30 something. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. And so like, I, you know, I would say you and I were definitely raised in oh, when Ralph dies, the bills are gone, dude, like have fun with it now because they're never going to survive, which turned out to not, not to be true. Heard but a lot just, of that, although I never believed in myself. But yeah, I know what you're getting at for many years. And then you had to endure. That's why six and ten was OK, because we have Willis McGahee and we're going to have him on some Madden show and be terrible. But we have a star running back or Marshawn Lynch or CJ Spiller, these star running backs that get an ESPN feature and be content with that. That's good enough. You know, seven and nine, six and 10, you know, they're going to run the ball a lot. We're never going to throw. We're going to get our teeth kicked in, skull crushed by the Patriots again by 30 points, you know, but yeah, you know, we were on Sunday night football one time. Like, that's what I, 
like it, i don't know i don't know where i'm going with this i'm just saying like i just feel like i'm glad that we're out of the the bills aren't gonna live here long era like it's they're here to stay despite the morally abhorrent billion dollar check they cut to a billionaire but like dude nobody belongs anywhere nobody exists on purpose everyone's gonna die you might as well watch football if you're into that kind of thing i I mean truthfully right like that you know the world's getting hotter the virus is getting worse inflation ice caps are melting the ice caps are melting there's war Monkey pox is a thing. If you want, you want monkey pox. Didn't have that on my board. All I'm saying is like, we're inundated with like heinously negative information, like constantly. And it's miserable. And it's really, really, really hard on regular people. Um, I don't have kids. Right. I can't imagine Tim. I believe you're, you're you have a family, right? Am I, is that fair to say? Right. Like, like I That's can't imagine. Also fair to say. Yes. I, I, it's quite I, accurate. I don't, cause I just want to assume that I'm highly just, accurate. So like, I, I can't even begin to, to know what that's like to have to feel like you guys are going to have a really tough, tough time on a kid because what's the world going to be like when they come of age, right? Like, what, like it, maybe I need to move back to Buffalo because it'll be the only fresh water source. You know what I mean? It's Google some shit, dude. It's bleak. People are pissing themselves in Amazon warehouses wearing adult diapers because you have to have Oreos delivered to your door. Got to have that. Got to have Oreos. So I'm going to, like, there's a human cost to that. I'm just saying, I watch a lot of John Oliver and it's probably making me a really depressed person. You are a ray of sunshine. You know, I, <laughs> I'm here. I'm healthy. I, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like, Oh, I'm just like a negative dick. It's just mostly like I read stuff and I'm, I consume information. And I don't know if you knew this newsflash, the world's a fucking tough place right now. It's pretty fucking miserable. And the solutions that in my opinion, I think will actually make the, the, the make better. I think the solutions that are out there are not feasible. So like, that's why I say might as well watch football dude. Cause it's all sucks. It's all coming crashing down. We probably got about 20 years of this shit left and let's enjoy it. I'm honest to God, like that's bleak, but also kind of hopeless and hopeful at the same time, right? Ignorance is bliss, bro. It's terrible. There's no hope. There's no fucking hope. We're all fucked. That's it. There's that's a Steve Trippy mantra right there. There's no hope. We're all fucked. So we might as well at least enjoy this conversation we're having, drink some seltzer, have a beer, have a beer, go for a walk, do whatever you gotta do because we're all fucked and there's no hope. Well, you're in Charlotte, but Jonah, I want to ask you since we're sitting here, and I you would be invited if you were here with us. Uh, Jonah, I, I think that I need I need a drink. Um, I'm going to produce this podcast. Would you like to drink with me tonight? <laughs> sure, but I want to give Steve a compliment and a comment. You say these uh you know, dreadful, depressing things, but you have a way of saying them with this optimistic tone of voice and facial expression that it really doesn't sound that bad that everything in the world is going to shit. I, I don't know what to tell you, Jonah. I really don't. Like, I appreciate you guys having me. I don't, I don't have anything to promote. I don't have a podcast. I don't have a job in media. I don't really, people don't even consume it. Never give a shit about it when they, when I did. You know how many times I told people at, I worked at 97 Rock and they're like, what is that? Like, like, I'm not even kidding. Like, it was tough. But, you know, it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me, guys. I don't know. This has been fun. I've enjoyed ha- it. Has it really? Good. I'm yes. glad I did something right. It's you know, funny. I you think gotta... that you, you, the way you, you're framing things in, uh, in very blunt terms. I have had an ability with this uh, medium to say things that I couldn't have said. Two and a half well, let's years do ago. this again, then. Yeah, I would be more than happy to bestow upon you more sad facts. That's the podcast I would start. Sad facts. Sad with facts Steve. with Steve sad, Trippy. Sad facts with Steve Trippy. Yeah. Here's why the world sucks today. Brought to you I by mean, CTBK, CPA by, and Business Consultants. Make sure you get your live read in, bro. You know, uh, Picasso's pizza. <laughs> Picasso's means fresh. I used to have that one like right away, but not anymore. Can you give Hammer's us a pizza curtain, and ale house? A curtain of loaders track for our intro music. I think it's time we refresh and update that intro music. Absolutely. I mean, we have there's stuff like on YouTube of us like playing it like a, that's actually decent quality I can send you, but it's like covers. Yeah. Covers. Well, yeah, that was the whole thing. It was all like 90 songs. You know what I mean? It wasn't like originals. Is there well, licensing YouTube I would need not, to worry about prob- with that? Prob- probably because like YouTube is incorrigible. Like if but like Fiona app was good. So you know, like yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys some links if you can use it. If not, sometimes usually you Facebook or YouTube will just immediately remove it anyway because of the auto. Right. AI. That happened to us all the time when we did the Facebook lives from the radio show. Yep. Because yeah. Because yeah. old producer 
didn't know enough not to play those songs over and over again. Well, it's because there's the air feed and the on and the on. This is shop. This is shop talk, everybody. Shop talk. You need the big voice guy. Shop talk. Um, the the air feeds wouldn't weren't really split, so the on air and the stream feed were the same. So you it would be very hard. At least they might have a solution for that now, but at the time it'd be tricky well, to. We just asked them to play less music because it was a sports show, but it didn't play out that way. Oh yeah, that was a fun little thing. I missed the fan. It it was an opportunity that my former employer, of course, botched terribly because they have no vision and don't really give a shit about what is worth it. But you know, that's because they're. Too. I think not just the show we did, but Jerry Sullivan show and Jerry you know, Sullivan. And, uh, Rich Gensler had his own sports show before Morning Moon. That's correct, and I would be up on that. I would guest for Rich and did updates for him, and we all did that for free. That was a blast, doing three hours a day of extra work for no money. Um, but, you know, I'm not bitter about that either. No, it's it's mostly just that, like, the only goal of any business is to make profit. That's it. And Cumulus, the 1270 The Fan, was not a profitable venture for them, so they had to be as lean as possible because they were making no money. It wasn't something the sales department gave a flying fuck about, so they weren't going to sell it, so it wasn't going to make money. The only point is to make money. If I haven't said that already, the only point is to make profit. So, you know, they're going to sell Shred and Reagan, and they're going to sell whatever is on. Or Shred and Reagan's on 97 Rock now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they moved over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're going to sell that and make some good money on that. And whatever the show is on Cass and Anthony, whoever they are, they're okay. They're on the air. Uh, you know, that. I, yeah, I should probably be careful not to shit talk my former employer too much. But, it, you know, it's... They don't it, listen either. Nobody it, listens to this show. It, it, it's, it, it, well, you know, I, I have some people that I, I don't think I have a bad relationship with uh, that company still, and I should probably not be a total dick. But it, I grew resentful that it was never going to happen for me and I worked really hard and it was unrecognized. And if I could at least say it that way, I think it, if anyone out there that you want a business and you have a young employee that works hard, that is eager and wants to learn things, support that person because they deserve to grow and do better too. in any business, I think it's extraordinarily hard right now for everybody, but it's really hard to be a person when you want to do a good job and you're not recognized and it makes people internalize that in bad ways at least it did for me i got real bitter tim you said once on your show resentment is a poison that you drink hoping the other person gets sick yes yeah that one rang through to me so if anyone's out there you own a business and i know it's hard because margins are tight but support your staff because everybody's just trying to get by and like go and watch the avengers later you know tim wants to go drink some resentment at the bar tonight there you go just don't yeah. do it so much because it's like bad for you. But like, again, that's why everything is like, like, just don't Google. Just don't read like, oh, how bad alcohol is for you, right? Because I enjoy, I enjoy drinking. It's one of the few don't vices the I have left. read comments and don't read up about alcohol. Or just in general, because like lithium is bad. Like, d- dude, it's, ugh. there's no answers. Let's have fun. Well, I enjoyed this. Thank you. I did There's too. There's some I gallows it, humor to be had in here. I like I, gallows humor. And Steve, yeah. let's let's do this again. Yeah, thank you. It was fun. Thank I, you I, for I, joining us and, and talking about your journey. And uh, and next time we'll have some sports to talk about. Yeah, actual no, that, sports. That would be. We'll have some actual, you know, answers. Maybe we'll see. Steve Trippy, you know him from '97 Rock. Well. For those of you who knows what a 97 rock is, Steve just mentioned that he runs into people who don't know what that is. But I then did. again, I also several run times. into people who thank me for that recent article I wrote in the Buffalo News. Uh, so, uh, but Steve, thanks for doing this. Thanks for joining thank the show. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next time. Thank you for having me, guys. CTBK is more than just a full service accounting firm. They are one team with an innovative approach to accounting and rise to each new challenge with collaborative problem-solving skills. CTBK goes above and beyond by lending helping hands in the Buffalo and Niagara community through volunteer work and donations and has partnered up with Victory Sports for 2020 and 2021 to keep kids in the community active. The professionals at CTBK are determined to help individuals and businesses succeed. Whether a large corporation, a small business, or somewhere in between, call CTBK at 716-630-2400. Again, 716-630-2400, and see what CTBK's one-team approach can do for you.
Oh, 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 oh,